Welcome to Real Paranormal Activity, the network. Entertainment you'll enjoy. You are listening to an RPA production where people gather. Foss Corporation, LLC. Hello, everybody. This is your old pal, Terry from Texas. This is the going to be the first show of the new year. And what I have to say this week is a rant and you may find it understandable, you may find it acceptable, you may find it right on line with the way things are going, but uh, I still want to rant, and it, it, it is about the paranormal. It's about all of these paranormal shows, specifically the ghost hunting shows. I've watched a few recently that I thought probably should never have been produced. If you're going to go on a ghost hunt, don't get excited when you find some. Don't go do lolly whenever you hear a voice. Don't get weird when there's footsteps down the hall. Because if you're going to a place that supposedly has ghosts, Expect them. Don't be all bent out of shape when it happens. And learn how to say something other than, Oh my God, or dude, or bro. Please. Because that just sounds so ridiculously dumb. Seriously. If you're going on a ghost hunt, you have all of your equipment, and that's fine and dandy. But don't pull out some weird looking piece of equipment that looks like somebody made it in a toy factory. And I don't mean plastic. I mean some weird shape. I saw one the other day. They pulled out this piece of equipment that I swear looked like the outline of the Alamo here in San Antonio. And if you hear explosions going off in the distance, it is... New Year's Eve Eve. So, we've got fireworks going off in our neighborhood. Uh, normally, it sounds like Fallujah at this time of the year, but it's not. It's just every now and then somebody will blow a rocket off. And that's pretty cool. I like fireworks. I don't have a problem with fireworks. And I've got pets. But the thing is, you you take care of your pets if you got fireworks. Anyway, off the subject. They go to these supposedly haunted locations. Okay, that's understandable. If you've got a if you've got a record there, go there. See if you can find something. But here's here's my take on it. Don't go to everybody in town and get every story that you can about the place you're going to. And, and hear every bit of gore and, and disgusting stories that you can find because your mind is going to be expecting that. Go in with a clean mind. Don't, don't take anybody's information from a place. Go in and see what you can find. If you can find something, then probably all the better. But to have... Someone tell you that this place, whether it be a hospital, a sanitarium, sanatorium, whatever you want to call it, a prison, a hotel. Oh, yeah, 17 people got slaughtered there by the sous chef. You know, I, I'm sorry, but quit telling those stories just to get people to come into your poor little podunk town if it's real, it'll get out. I promise you, it will get out. 
If you are a producer of one of these shows, do us a favor. Quit having the eerie music playing in the background when we're supposed to be listening for footsteps or voices or whatever. Because hearing a piano going ding, 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 and knowing it's on the soundtrack is a far cry from hearing something going, hello, and knowing it's not on the soundtrack. The background music that you put on these shows eliminates any kind of uh, interest because you can't hear what's going on. And to have your people whip around suddenly and say, what was that? What was that? What was that? No, that doesn't work either. If you don't know what you're hunting, now you can, you can justifiably ask questions. Did I just see something run down the hall? Did I see something cross over the hall? Yeah, very possibly you did. I, I've seen things like that, even in my own house, where I don't keep going, what was that? What was that? What was that? If I hear a noise in the kitchen, I don't wonder if it's a ghost. It could be. I don't really care. But it's more than likely my cats. The, uh, the thing about having the camera always on the hunters and then whipping around to an empty hallway. I just saw something down the hallway. Well, we don't see it. And having who knows how many crew members in the house with them or in the building with them, we don't know what's real and what's not. And, and I know that's your intention for us not to know that, but it removes your credibility no matter what show you're on. If you're on that long-running show with the three people doing the searching, four people doing searching, or if you're in that long-running show with the crew that goes in and investigates different parts of the place that they're investigating. But seriously, please learn to speak a different language other than cuss words please. We don't need to hear that. We don't need to hear the fact that you've got an eighth grader's vocabulary. Say something intelligent. You know, I'm tired of hearing the what the, what the, what the, what the F, you know, every time you turn around. And bro, I've said this a while ago, a bro and, and a dude and you know, learn to speak English, not slang, because slang doesn't do anybody any good. It just makes me think that you're how you dress, and that's as a teenager. And really, here here's a question that I have that is for real. It's a it's an actual question. If you're going in on a ghost hunt. Do you really need to dress in black all the time? I'm just curious. Uh, I've never been on a ghost hunt in my life, except in my own house. And I didn't have to hunt them. They came to me. So, you know, think about what you're doing when you're doing it and... and the showrunners, I know you're out there for a thrill. You're trying to get people to tune in and watch the show. But become a little bit more realistic with it. Have your investigators be intelligent. And not like the people from England whom I've watched a time or two. Where... You can't believe a word they say simply because, number one, you can't understand what language they're using. And, and, you know, that's just part of the deal. That's part of the deal. But down here, down here in Texas, we, we talk English, talk Texan, actually, 
but it's with an English bent. And to be honest with you, I try not to use slang at all short of y'all, going to see mom and them. You know, my, my, my soft words are not, you know, something that nobody knows what it means. And, and I don't use hard words when I'm talking on the, on the, uh, podcast or if I'm talking to someone in public I'm not going to go cussing at them either but anyway they're they're having a a paranormal uh, conference here next month uh, just about three weeks away I think it is and I was going to go and then they made a big deal about advertising the people that will be doing uh, tarot cards and I thought, well, that's just not a place I need to be. I have beliefs of my own that I will not bend, I will not break, I will not put into a, a vice and and shape them the way I want them, simply because that's the way I believe. If you believe in that, that's fine. Go to it. Knock yourself out. But I'm not going to go to it, and I'm not going to go do those things that I think are not right for me. Now, have I done things that weren't right for me? Yeah, I have. Stupid things in the past when I was younger. It happens. You know, you, you learn things and don't do them anymore. So, we have ghost hunter shows that go to well-known places in most cases and some unwell-known places and they spend a lot of time chasing noises Uh, the sound of a rock hitting the floor they go running after it the sound of what they think is a voice down the hall which actually sounds like a voice down the hall Um, I was watching one just yesterday that it sounded very much like there were people in the building that these young folks were checking out. And it probably wouldn't have been too hard to imagine homeless people living in that building or somebody coming in there to try to scare them. But it it was interesting, but you really don't have to get all bent out of shape, I guess, unless you're just that scared. If you're that scared, don't do it. The only thing I can tell you, don't do it. And these folks that, that go from state to state to state to go to different haunted locations, um, strange things happen at these places you're very possibly going to find something there. Uh, If there's been history there, then chances are you're going to find something there that in our minds shouldn't be there. But there's one that I've watched. One group will go into a, quote, haunted location, and they will speak to the supposed spirits with great respect If you don't want us to be here, just tell us and we'll leave. And if they get some kind of response that gives them the idea that they ought to leave, they will leave. Of course, they'll finish investigating somewhere else on the property, but that's not what they're asking. They're asking for that particular place and time. Again, I said, I've never... I've never been on a ghost hunt. Not technically. Uh, I've done some snooping around on my own. Uh, I've never seen anything at any of the places I've ever worked because I used to do security and night security at that. And there were never any unexplained instances. Now, I take that back. There, There was... Some events at one of the places I worked the longest overnight, and we had voices, we had doors closing, we had all kinds of 
unusual stuff that happened. So yeah, there there were some things that happened, but it's not like I saw anything. There, there were no spirits walking around. But there was some weird stuff. And there was this one other. And basically it was that we could see somebody sitting on a bench. But when we went back to check it out, it was just a like an army coat laying there. Laying there, not sitting up but laying there. So I don't know if the person that was wearing it left it and walked away or what, or if we actually saw something that was paranormal. As I've said, I've got ghosts in my house. I have noises a lot. I have seen shadows in my bathroom, which may be the most necessary part of the day for him. I don't know. Um, We've heard footsteps going through the house. We've heard voices in the house having conversations. And there have been numerous times when I felt like there was something there with me, but not harmful, not scary, just a little weird. But then again, I'm weird, so hey, you know, it, it works. But uh, I have seen a grand total of, in 63 years, I've seen a grand total of one ghost that I know of for sure. And that was in my bedroom here one night. I stood up out of bed, and there was an image that appeared right next to me. It looked like a movie being shown through moving smoke. So it just kind of drifted up and away. And, and gone. But it was a woman wearing a high neck dress. No particular fright involved. It was just there and it was gone. So what can I say about the paranormal? Uh, it happens. Some people don't believe in it. I guess they won't ever see it. Some people do believe in it. They see it all the time. It's like I say, if you're going to go out looking for UFOs, if you're going to go out looking for UFOs, that is, you're probably going to find one. Is it actually something from another planet? Probably not. Because if these people or if these beings could come from the distances of space, why would they want to look at us? We're nothing more than chimpanzees to them. If they're that far in advance of us, we're nothing but a chimp. Anyway, do I believe aliens exist? I don't know, and I don't think so. Because I look at things from a Christian perspective, okay? I am a born-again believing Christian, and I believe in what the Bible says. The Bible does not mention little gray aliens that look like walking prunes taking anybody up to heaven. I don't know what Ezekiel's wheel within a wheel was. I don't know what the the uh, four-faced creatures or three-faced creatures, whatever they were, were in the Bible. I don't know what a lot of things were in the Bible because, number one, I didn't write it. Number two, I wasn't there when it was written. Do I believe in giants? Yes, simply because of the Bible again. Do I believe in angels? Yes. Can a human ever become an angel? No. Because we are not angels. We are created differently from angels. There was a question asked on the on the podcast one time. Can my grandmother be my guardian angel? No, in my opinion. And I, I'll tell you why I say that. Because the Bible says that man was created a little lower than the angels now. But in the end times, after Judgment Day, it says that man will judge angels. We are a different creation. We are two separate tiers of the heavenly realm. So I, I don't think your grandmother can be your guardian angel, but I do believe she can be your guardian spirit. I don't have a problem believing that because 
I've got some evidence of that myself, so I'm not going to argue any more about it. Do I believe in Bigfoot? Oh, boy, do I believe in Bigfoot. Has anybody ever seen one as far as scientific knowledge goes? I don't think so. They've seen them, but they've never been able to catch one. Well, why don't we find a dead body of one out in the... Can you find a dead body of a bear out in the woods after just a few days? Can you find, can you find a cow out in the long, lonesome pastures after a couple of days if they're not just bones? Uh, I don't know what happens to Bigfoots. I don't know where they go to to die or get sucked up to space. I don't know. I don't know what happens to them. But I believe they're here. I believe they're here, and I believe they're actually moving around the world in their various different spaces, in their various different incarnations, and I think they're doing it. Do I believe in reincarnation, since I said that word? No, I don't believe in reincarnation. How many people have come out and said that they were Marie Antoinette in a previous life? Or they were Cleopatra in a previous life? How many people can be the same person? Seriously. If Cleopatra lived, I don't know, 40 years... How many people could have been her as an adult ruling Egypt? Seriously. You believe that? Okay. I'm not going to argue it with you. I just don't. So, the paranormal is one of those things that it's got to be belief. It's got to be faith. It's got to be what you know in your heart and think in your mind is true. I'm thinking that in this life, in, in, in our world that we live in right now, that Bigfoot exists, um, UFOs exist because I've seen them, aliens, not so much, ghosts, yes, I believe, um, legends such as vampires, I don't know, I don't think so, but, you know, it, it's always fun to talk about werewolves i i think there's something to the werewolf deal but i think it may have been drawn out because a lot of what we know about werewolves have been because of movie writers uh some of the some of the arguments about werewolves come from movie writers same thing about mummies uh i don't know that the Egyptians ever told a story about a mummy coming back to life to kill people. I think that's just all made up in, in our minds, our, our human minds. Um, it's just, it's so much fun to talk about things of the paranormal that we can have a great time just telling ghost stories and telling stories about Bigfoot up in the you know, Pacific Northwest and the Yeti over in Asia, you know, and the Yowie down in Australia. So we can we can talk about these things and share we can even share ideas on what they are and probably be okay with that. I don't know that anybody's ever gotten in a war over what a Bigfoot really is. So, I mean, for Pete's sake, I turned on TV last night and was watching a show called Bigfoot's Big Weekend or Fun Weekend or something like that. And Bigfoot was sitting in a, a mineral spring with these two girls uh, who were topless. So it, it's kind of goofy. The things that we can come up with. Um, I consider... The legend of Dracula and the legend of vampires versus Love at First Bite with George Hamilton as Dracula. Okay, that was a, that was funny. That was a funny show. Uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It with Leslie Nielsen. That was funny. Uh, 
the legend of Frankenstein's monster or the modern Prometheus by that beautiful little girl, um, Mary Wollenstonecraft Shelley. And that raised, I mean, that uh, story was written as a result of a cocaine-fueled weekend, uh, as I've heard, uh, where she was sitting on her mother's grave writing this story. Now, it turns out to be a wonderful story. I mean, it's great escapism. But man cannot do what God can do. Under no circumstances, I don't believe. So, can a man create a, a another human being? No, only in birth. You know, through that. But we have to understand that in the search for the paranormal that there's a lot of disbelief involving the paranormal. There are people that say, oh, there are no ghosts at Gettysburg, while others will say, oh, there's hundreds of ghosts at Gettysburg. Um, there are no ghosts at the Alamo. Well, there are a lot of ghosts at the Alamo. Uh, there's no ghosts at the Minger Hotel. Yeah, there's a lot of ghosts at the Minger Hotel. Different things like that. Alcatraz Island is full of them. No, there's not a single ghost on Alcatraz. So you see, it's, it's you know, two sides of a card. Those that believe and those that don't believe. And you're never going to convince either of the other's situation. Well, I know I've ranted, and this is not really much of a story, but I just wanted to get some ideas across to you that uh, that some of these shows are just... I'm going to go ahead and say it. They're too fake to be good. They're too fake to be real. And do I think that some of them cheat? because they don't have anything to look for? Unfortunately, yes. I think there's a lot of show running that happens and a lot of things that happen on screen that aren't for real, that aren't true. And, you know, that's just my opinion. That's my take on it. Well, that's all I've got for this week, and I'm going to let you go with this because I know this is different. This is not what you would normally have as a story from me. But I do want to tell you, Happy New Year. I hope you had a, a good Christmas time. And happy, wealthy, healthy New Year to you. This is me, Terry from Texas, saying goodnight to you. And we'll see you at the next show. Thanks a lot. <laughs>